How statistical fallacies could ruin your retirement plan. All right, so this is important. So we're going to bust out the PVC pipe of knowledge. And you know it's authentic because they got the green uh, tape there. All right, so I'm looking this morning. I'm getting my boys up and at them. And uh, I'm looking while they're waiting for them. I'm getting uh, looking at my son's uh, AP statistics book. I'm like, oh, this is interesting. So I was looking to see what they say about Monte Carlo probabilities. And they don't talk about Monte Carlo. I couldn't believe it. I was like, huh? You don't talk about it. It's weird to me, but okay. And then, but they did have a section on NHL. So I'm looking on their M's. There's nothing under M's. And then the first thing on their eight N is NHL. So, ooh, I like hockey. I like statistics. Let's see how they do this. Remember, this is a statistics AP course. And so let's show you what happened here. This is very interesting to me. Uh, let's check this out. So they got a hypothesis that NHL players born early in the year will go into uh, player if hockey players born earlier in the year will make it to the NHL more than hockey players born later in the year. And he uses this right here. In his book, Outliers, Malcolm Gladwell introduces the idea of relative age effect with an example from hockey. Many NHL players come from Canada. And because January 1st is a cutoff birthday for youth hockey leagues in Canada, children born earlier in the year compete against players who may be as much as 12 months younger. Gladwell argues that those relatively old players tend to be bigger, stronger, faster, and hence get more playing time and more coaching and have a better chance of going to the NHL. Very interesting. And then they conclude their hypothesis, or I can't remember how this works anymore. It's a thesis hypothesis, but they say, hey, we're going to sample a random sample of any of 80 NHL players was selected to determine if their birthdays are uniformly distributed across the four quarters of the year. Now, remember, in the NHL, there's about 1,200 players, so they're taking about 6.5% random sample size. They're going to randomly sample 6.5% to see if the Canadian the hypothesis, whatever it is, hypothesis or theory, is true. That if you're born earlier in the year, there's a better prop likelihood you'll go into the NHL than if you're born later in the year. All right, so they're sampling 6% of the NHL population. Look what they find. Oh, my goodness. Of the 80, 32 were born in the first quarter, 20 were born in the second quarter, 16 in the third, and only 12 in the fourth. Thus, you see right here, there's supposed to be 20 born in each quarter. You're supposed to have 25% born in the first, 25 in the second, blah, blah, blah. But we see, not only is there significantly more in the first quarter, i.e. proving Malcolm Gladwell's theory or hypothesis, but we have significantly less in the last quarter. They even proved it twice because we're saying, look, more here, a whole lot less there than it should be. It should be 20% across the board or 25% across the board or 20 people should be born in January through March, 20 in April through June and so on and so on. All right, so we see that proves it, right? No, it doesn't prove it. It doesn't. <laughs> How many people are actually in the NHL from Canada? Of the 20, 1,200 players, there's only 42% are actually native of Canada. That's it. So you're taking this small sample size, the minority of the population, because 58% of the people aren't from Canada, and are extrapolating it to the whole. So you're taking a fraction and extrapolating it to the whole. You can't do that. And just because you did a random sample size of 80 people, that does not validate Malcolm Gladwell's hypothesis. Because, A, we don't know who was in that sample size. Was it all Canadians? Was it 58% non-Canadians? I mean, what, what was that random sample size? We only sampled 6% of the population. We could easily figure this out by just looking at the total population as a whole and saying, hey, how many people were born in Canada? How many people were born elsewhere? Did the people elsewhere who were born in Russia, Finland, United States, did they also have a, uh, go to the NHL higher uh, uh, the earlier they were born in the year or later? Did we, we don't know. But you cannot say because Canada, ha this happened in Canada it's reflective of the population as a whole, just like with life expectancy in the United States. The United States is about 5.5% of the world's population. You can't say, hey, in the United States, you know, they take vaccines all the time, and they have a life expectancy of 78. So we're going to randomly survey 6% of the world's population, and we're going to find out that, in, in, uh, that the, of that random survey that the average life expectancy in the world is 78. Thus, if you take vaccines like they do in the USA, that means you'll live to 78. You can't do that. You, that's simple with statistic of fallacy. You, that's, oh my goodness. You can't extrapolate something from here and say it's applicable to the world when we're such a small percentage of, the, of this case in the United States, only it's about 5.5%. I mean, hell, even India and China between them are only 33% of the population of the world. 
So you couldn't even do that. You couldn't have any in China and say 33% of the population freaking uses a bidet and there's no tuberculosis, thus, and, and their life expecting is 78, and thus we'd sample size 6% uh, of the world's, whatever it is, uh, of the population, and they also have a sample, they also have a life expectancy of 78. Thus, if you use a bidet, you're going to have a life expectancy of 78. It doesn't make any sense. That's a statistic fallacy, man. I just, Malcolm Gladwell, they all think he's all down a bag of chips because he looks, you know, he's like, he's got crazy hair. You know, I think his mom's Jamaican or something like that. So like, oh, you know, he's a mixed nut, as Kamal like to say. And he sounds so smart. He goes on these podcasts. Oh, he's so smart. I'm like, dude, I actually liked Malcolm Gladwell's podcast. I don't listen to it anymore, but I mean, I probably should. I, I enjoyed it, but it's like, dude, it's just this guy thinks he's all down a bag of chips. Anyway, so I just want to point something else here too. It's kind of like going back to the 4% rule. The 4% rule, well, if I just spend 4% of my, problem, my portfolio each and every year, I won't run out of money. What? That's based on a tiny sample size. That's based on 1926 to 1990. That's it. That's, that's not a big enough sample size to make it statistically relevant. It's just not. It's not. And it's based on worse. It's based on a 60-40 portfolio with, international, with uh, domestic bond, intermediate bonds and domestic U.S. stocks, large cap stocks. You cannot extrapolate a 4% rule based on a tiny sample size to the overall picture. That's statistically a fallacy. You can't do that. But people do it all the time. And let me just prove why. That's freaking stupid. Because we're going to go over here to my man. Hold on a second. Uh, let me pause it. And we're going to use T-bills. All right. And we're going to use T-bills from my man, Daniel Colbert's 55E.co uh, bucket strategy. We're going to say, we got, in 1997, we got a million dollars in our portfolio. We're taking 40000 a year adjusted for inflation. What happens? Oh, we ran out of money in year 27. Oh, my goodness. So that didn't work. What happens if we do it in 1966, huh? Oh, we ran out of money uh, in year 28. Oh, well, that didn't work. What happens if we did it in 19, I don't know, freaking 73, 73. That might have worked. No, nope, ran out of money there. So just three random accounts. You know, I hate to say random because I know that 1966 was bad. 1973 was bad. I didn't know that about 97 or whatever it is. But all three of those ran out of money. But it's only 4%, Josh. Yeah, exactly. Because you're using a 4% rule, which is based on a statistic uh, small account amount relative to the overall population as a whole. The sample size is too small. Just like when you use um, the sample size of 30 rolling year peers. We don't have enough unique sample size to say that's statistically probable or relevant. We just don't. Go back to 1871. Not, oh my goodness. Not like that. The S, it was like the S&P 50 back then. And now it's the S&P 500. We, and back, basically back then it was just all railroads and stuff like that. So we have a tiny, tiny sample size that has changed over the course of 150 years. And we're going to say, well, you know, 30 year rolling periods, this happened. That, but we only have five unique 30-year rolling periods. And I, just the fact that uh, I'm sitting there thinking, how can you validate Malcolm Gladwell's theory that if you are born in Phoenix, Arizona, and you are born in January, you have a better shot at going to the NHL than if you're born in Boston, Massachusetts, but you're born in December, based on what's happening in Canada? It doesn't make any sense. Now, again, if we want to look at the NHL as a whole, that's fine. And say, hey, you got 1,200 people. You know, more than 25% of the population was born in the first quarter. Then you can say, it looks like there's some validity to this thing. We have 1,200 people. 40, I don't know, freaking of the 1,200 people, 400 were born in uh, January through March, which is significantly above where there should be. There should only be 300 born in January and March. We could say, oh, that's interesting. You can say, well, that proves that those people born in January, March, if you're born earlier, you have a better probability of going to the NHL. But even that's not enough. Because even then you guys say, well, what is, is there anything unique about this 400 people other than they were born in January? You see what I'm saying? You could say maybe they're all average 6'5 and 240. And they say, well, that has nothing to do with being born in January. You say it's just bigger. Uh, anyway, it's, you can't, like life expectancy, I think we're already talking about. Yeah, we already did the life expectancy thing. So freaking frustrating. Don't let statistics, just because these guys sound so smart, dude. All it takes is a guy in his Toronto Blue Jays t-shirt in his basement with his dogs having shaved. I did brush my chops. Pearly yellows. Yeah. All right. God bless. Love your thoughts. Subscribe. Freaking hit the smash the like button. Hope says smash. See ya.